Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're once again going to be talking about Major Hurricane Delta that is now a Category 2, but headed straight back for Category 3 status. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, now that we're officially onto the named Storm of Delta, how many more named storms do you think we're going to have this season? Just give me a number or you can tell me the name you think we're going to get to. And I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now quickly, I wanted to let all of you know that I'm going to actually be frequently updating my Hurricane Delta forecast over on our Facebook page. That's going to be in the pinned comment and the description down below. All right, now let's get into this video. And first things first, we're taking a look at that National Hurricane Center cone forecast here for Hurricane Delta. And as you can see, it is racing at 15 miles per hour. It has 100 mile per hour sustained winds, which is category two, pretty close to category three status, actually. And as you can see, by about 1 a.m. tonight, we are expected to cross back into major hurricane status. And then it might weaken below major hurricane status there at about 1 p.m. on Friday before it's making landfall there with western Louisiana, which is now in the crosshairs of Hurricane Delta. I don't know if it'll be a Category 3 or a Category 2. That's kind of what the difference is here between a hurricane and a major hurricane. Uh, however, I know that it will have very little uh, difference in the impacts of this storm, a few miles per hour difference. So really you shouldn't be paying attention to whether it's a major hurricane or not because, uh, well, it's going to be major either way. It's just called major. If it's a category three or not, it's going to bring major impacts regardless. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery, the spaghetti models, the intensity guidance, and then we're going to get right into the impacts for hurricane Delta. Now, I guess the most interesting thing with Hurricane Delta so far has been that it has never had an eye, really, very small, if anything, uh, at certain points. But as this storm gets bigger, it is expected to get bigger here soon. I think that it will develop an eye uh, near, I would say, later this evening. We could see an eye begin to develop as it intensifies. We know this storm is intensifying. It has very, very defined buzzsaw look. Uh, this storm is going to intensify back likely to a category three, possibly even category four uh, with how much time it has over those warm waters. It really just depends, uh, but it is going to weaken slightly before making landfall with Louisiana, which is very good news. All right, now here's our spaghetti model guidance here. And as you can see, they are very confident in that western Louisiana impact there, maybe central Louisiana at the furthest east, I would say, but really right where Laura made landfall seems to be the most likely impact spot, which is very unfortunate, obviously, because back to back hurricanes is never a good thing for any area. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. I'm going to take a look at all three of our ensemble model uh, spaghetti model guidance to just see if any of them show anything different. Then we're going to get into the intensity guidance. We're going to start talking about uh, some of the impacts as far as storm surge, rainfall, things of that nature. Now we're going to start out with the Canadian Ensemble model here because I want to start out with the worst model and kind of work our way towards the best. I think that's going to be the best way to go. I've been showing like the GFS Ensemble model, then the Canadian, then the European, uh, but I really want to start out with this one just to get it out of the way. Uh, this one is really just off and I looked at the actual, um, I looked at the actual Canadian model on its forecast for like winds with this storm. And it had this storm so much weaker than it is right now as of last night's run. This model is just so off on this. But I will say this, the track is right in line with what the rest of the models are showing. So at least the track isn't too bad here. Now the GFS and Sama model, as you can see, has a much stronger storm. Uh, almost all of these have it in a 960, I would say 950 to 960 range, maybe even some in the 970s. Uh, but that's still a very strong storm. That's indicated by those kind of peach colors there, uh, as you can see. And that's going to reach, again, western Louisiana. And then here's our European model. And you might have noted yesterday that I mentioned that the European model was the only one as of yesterday showing this more western Louisiana track. And that the rest showed a more eastern Louisiana track. And we were going to figure out which one was going to win. Because usually we, what we will see is the rest fold to what one, of, one or the other is showing. And the rest have folded to what the European model was showing. So the European model appears to have won that battle, that model battle, if you will. Uh, and this one actually has a stronger storm as well. This one seems to be the most accurate with this storm so far. So we really want to take note of that. 
This one has some showing as low as I see 944 millibars, um, lower 950s. That's a very strong storm. And you can see some of those reds actually. So it goes deeper than just the peach color. That is extremely bad news here. Uh, and, and we're going to need to watch this one very closely, especially since it's the European model. And the European model was correct as of yesterday, like I said, and it's been correct with this storm pretty well. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that intensity guidance. And then we're going to start taking a look at our HWRF model, which is another model that has done excellent with this storm. Now, here's that model intensity guidance. And this is crucial because, as you can see, we're a category two, like I said before. Uh, but about 50 to 60 percent of these have us getting back to category three. I think it's a little more likely than that. A lot of these models are showing it's staying under category three status, which would mean we're not going to see it return to major hurricane status. However, the National Hurricane Center has really suggested that we are going to go back towards major hurricane status. Again, we saw that in their cone forecast. Also, the, again, the European model has done great with this storm and the rest have done badly and they have bent towards what the European model is showing. So I'm expecting them to do the same thing with the intensity guidance as well, where the European model is showing a more intense storm. All right. That's usually how these things go. Uh, and then you can see they drop off at about 24 hours from now, which is going to be just a few hours before landfall. Again, we do expect a slight uh, lowering of intensity. So you can see between hours 24 and 36, they, they are going to go down maybe by about 10 knots of intensity. And then the sharp drop off after that is the landfall. All right. Now here is our HWRF model. And this one has done a great job all season, all hurricane season, actually. And this is right now. Uh, and this was the run from zero Z. So this was from 8 PM last night. And this is actually the map that is trying to depict what we're seeing about right now. And it shows 98.2 miles per hour. Again, we're at 100 miles per hour with this storm. So it is extremely uh, close to being correct for right now. It's only about less than two miles per hour off of where we're actually at right now, which is another just factor telling me this, this model is doing a great job. By this afternoon, it has us at 115 miles per hour, which is again, category three status. So this one has us as of this afternoon, regaining that category three major hurricane status. And actually by 2 a.m. tonight, it has us at 126 miles per hour, which is approaching category four status. And then by the time we reach landfall, as you can see, we see that it has weakened, like I said before, and it's at about 104 miles per hour. So we will see a stronger end category two storm if this was to verify here. And this would still be a very strong storm because again, 100 mile per hour winds moving on shore, uh, it's hard to call that weak. It's just a little bit weaker than a category three, four, five, obviously, but it still would be just you wouldn't be able to tell the difference really uh, from the surface. That's what I always say in these types of situations. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking a little bit more about those impacts. We're going to talk about our total winds according to the European model. We're going to talk about the total rainfall. We're going to talk about storm surge. And then we're going to get into the key messages and our direct weather forecast. All right, now this is a cool tool. This is what we call our accumulated maximum wind gusts. So really what this is, is it's basically just taking the wind gusts from any time within the 66 hour model run that we're taking a look at, where this is only through hour 66. And it's taking the maximum winds at any point for any given location. So this is the maximum winds you could expect. Let's say you're in Southern Louisiana. That is the maximum winds you can expect at any point from this storm. Uh, I hope that makes sense. It gets a little more confusing when you start to use the more advanced model tools like this, but I try to break it down for you guys and make it a little easier. Anyway, uh, basically all you need to know is if you're in those greens, you're anywhere from about 34 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts, which is moderate. I would say that's more of a nuisance windstorm. It's as you move into those yellow shades through the red shades, that's where you're at about 50 to 70 mile per hour. That's when we're talking a little bit more about the damaging wind. And then it's those brown to pink shades um, so the brown to kind of the white almost shades or tan shades, uh, that's where we're at about 70 to 90 mile per hour wind gusts. And then it's those reds where we're at 90 to anywhere from 90 to about 125 mile per hour wind gusts, which is the major uh, extreme winds there. Uh, so you can pinpoint your location and try to figure it out. Here's our total rainfall. If you're anywhere below the yellows, basically, so blues, greens, grays, you're under an inch of rain. 
If you're in the yellows, you're at an inch to two inches of rain. If you're in the reds, you're at about two to five inches of rain. And if you're in those brown shades there, you're at about five to 10 inches of rain. These models have been very consistent with the fact that the maximum amount of winds that they expect to be widespread is about five to 10 inches of rain. And it stays true here on the bottom right. You can see that the maximum rainfall anywhere on this map right now is about 10.04 inches of rain. So right there with that maximum. Here's our expected storm surge. Uh, so we can see one to three feet on the very outer edges. We see two to four feet uh, as we approach that Texas, Louisiana border near Cameron. We have four to seven feet. Uh, Vermilion Bay, if that's how you say that, is seven to 11 feet. Anywhere to the east of there, it's seven to 11 feet. Uh, four to six as we get closer to the eastern Louisiana region. And then we see three to five there for the very, very eastern Louisiana border. Uh, with Mississippi, where we see in, in very coastal Mississippi, we see about two to four feet of storm surge expected. Uh, so there is some areas that do expect that major storm surge there in that, in that seven to 11 feet. Uh, we see moderate amounts in those four to six feet regions. And then the outer ends, we see more of the one to three feet kind of nuisance type situation. Shouldn't cause too much damage unless you're extremely low lying. Now here's the key messages. This is a very useful tool. I show this, I've been showing this very frequently recently. I recommend you just pause the video and read this. If you're expecting impacts, just definitely read this. It even has implications for the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic. So really just pause the video and read that through. Very thorough on that information. You can find more at the National Hurricane Center uh, website. I highly recommend you do so actually to seek official guidance. Now let's get into our official direct weather forecast. And as you can see, we're a category two, like I said, uh, we're at 23 point zero degrees north by 91.4 degrees west. We have 100 mile per hour winds, a 973 millibar low pressure center, and we're moving northwest at 15 miles per hour. It's slowed down by two miles per hour, but it's still moving significantly fast. And as you can see now, our cone forecast expects this one to hit western Louisiana, which is worst case scenario because they just got Laura a couple months back. And it's actually going to head straight through up into northern Mississippi, areas in Arkansas, Tennessee, bring some heavy rainfall and maybe some uh, moderate gusty winds. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you expect any more major hurricanes this year? And AM said, I do not think there will be any more major hurricanes this year, although we should expect more tropical storms and hurricanes. This comment of the day actually inspired uh, me to ask today's comment of the day, which was, again, how many named storms you think we will see from this point onward. Uh, because it is kind of an interesting question. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Mad Bird, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, Mark J, alongside our platinum patrons, Donna Carnes and Larry LaPan. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. Again, always be sure to seek official guidance from the National Hurricane Center. Also, again, be sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.